Just one game. We welcome you inside the broadcast booth. Paul Severino and Todd Hollinsworth back with you here in Atlanta. Glad that you are with us tonight. Again, the doubleheader yesterday, certainly uh, not good. It was an awful lot of Braves and not too much Marlins, so a look to bounce back tonight. Well, I think there's an opportunity to win a baseball game. That's what one thing this team has really done well this year is there have been some bad losses and some bad days. The ability to forget what happened the night before and come back the next day and play a quality ball game. Let's hope that's the case tonight. Well, while the Marlins are doing their best to forget what happened yesterday, the baseball world buzzing over what happened yesterday for Ronald Acuna Jr. Yes, he had a home run to lead off both games, but just in the leadoff spot, period, he has been unbelievable. Well, he really has. I think the one thing that jumps out, he obviously, the 10 homers and the 20 RBIs. I think everything else is a byproduct of that. And I love the move. You take some of these young, athletic players that are coming into the game today, thrust them into that leadoff role. Now, yeah, listen, this isn't about working counts and understanding how necessarily you're being pitched. It's being able to hit velocity and jump on fastballs. And that's what Acuna has done such a fantastic job of. And where do you get more fastballs? Well, parked right in front of Barcakis and Freeman and, well, most nights, Albies. And that's where you get them. Yeah, we're not going to talk too much about the fastball tonight, maybe here and there, but certainly the change up when it comes to Trevor Richards who has been otherworldly over the course of his last five starts. How about an ERA right around one and a half? Uh, I love it. Listen, good, great fastball command. He's been on the edges and that change up has been just absolutely outstanding. Throwing it about 40% of the time in the inside those numbers. You see the 153 ERA, about 75% of his strikeouts during this great stretch coming on the change up. It's going to be a big pitch. You know, listen, there's so many talented lefties in this lineup for the Atlanta Braves for Richards tonight. That's that changeup could work wonders. Oh, by the way, they haven't seen the changeup. They haven't faced him this year. On the other side of this pitching matchup, arguably, and there are some really good arms in this brave starting rotation, but arguably the most consistent has been a former Marlin, Annabelle Sanchez. Well, and I think what makes Annabelle so unique to what the Braves are doing, and it's been a great uh, bounce back story for him personally, is the fact that he doesn't throw as hard as anybody else in this rotation. He as well is about the changeup and that cutter that he has, and he kind of hangs out a little bit velocity wise below the other guys, but he's been getting the best results. All right, Marlins trying to get back in this series and try to get uh, a win here in game three. When we come back, it is a date against an old friend. Somebody threw a no-no while wearing a Marlins uniform. Anabel Sanchez and the Braves up against the Marlins next.
SunTrust Park getting set for the first pitch. Third game of a four-game set over the course of three days here between the Marlins and the Braves. And look at the Marlins starting lineup presented to you by Southwest. JT Real Muto in the two spot today. And you've got Brian Anderson going through a little bit of a slump right now over the course of his last seven games. Just three hits. He looks to get things right tonight against Anibel Sanchez, whose first pitch is outside for ball one. Of course, we know Anibel Sanchez from uh, years ago. A former Marlin before going over to the Detroit Tigers, but back in the National League and back to giving up hits, evidently. Here we go, a base hit to lead things off here for Rafael Ortega. Not a bad start. That's what you like to see, being aggressive, going the other way. Certainly the Marlins will take uh, the leadoff base runner. It's hard to come by yesterday. All right, Annabelle Sanchez, 86 innings, 283 ERA. That leads. The Braves staff, he does it a little bit different, doesn't possess the high-end velocity that so many in this Braves rotation do. Faced the Marlins, last faced the Marlins in 2016. Couple of starts against them, 164 ERA. He's had a fantastic season. It's pretty well here at SunTrust as well, 2.61 ERA. And the first pitch to JT Real Muto misses for ball one. Real Muto yesterday had his first multi-hit game since the end of July, the 28th. That was the day that he actually had the walk-off hit against the Nationals. But it's been uh, overall cooled off a little bit in the month of August, just six for 36. There is a called strike on the outside corner. Home plate umpire tonight is the crew chief, Paul Nauert. Chad Fairchild over at first. Scott Berry, the umpire at second. And Carlos Torres is the umpire at third. And Sanchez keeping a close eye on Ortega at first. Base Steelers 10 for 11 against Sanchez this season. Comes the one two to Real Muto, bounces in there and blocked by Suzuki. Two balls and two strikes. Now for Sanchez, didn't last long in his last outing, just two innings, was hit with a comebacker. But uh, none the worse for the Wears back out there for his next turn in the rotation. There was some concern at the time. Everybody thought he probably will be okay, and here we are five days later. It looks to be. Just fine as that one is fouled back to the screen. Still two and two on the Marlins catcher. And ended up with a bruised calf. We'll keep our eye on that, see if anything happens tonight. But you're right, really missed no significant time. Another check on Ortega, who is back. We talk about the consistency and he being one of the most consistent in this Braves rotation. He's never allowed more than four runs in any start this season. The RA has never been above three. So a little off there for his first strikeout tonight. All right, let's get you some more details on the successful season so far for Sanchez with the AutoNation scouting report. Friend or foe, that's right. He's a former Marlin, racked up some pretty impressive numbers as a Marlin. Seven, excuse me, seven total years. 44 wins and a 375 ERA, four complete game shutouts. Some impressive stuff. Now, cut it out. Now, listen, he has really struggled in Detroit towards the end of his uh, run there. Ended up with Minnesota and now is here with the Atlanta Braves. And in a lot of it, his success is centered around his cutter. You saw it right there at 86 miles an hour. He's thrown in about 21% of the time, up 8% from last season. How about a batting average against at 151? You see that late run that it has. That's his cut fastball. And the last key to the game is don't change a thing. JT Real Muto saw a number of the changeups. So when you talk about Sanchez and kind of his how he goes about it, Paul, he's going to pitch backwards tonight. You're going to see that cutter. You're going to see the changeup. And at times, you might see him elevate with a 91-92, but not too much. In fact, he throws more off speed 60% of the time. The fastball only right around 40%. Well, he's already checked on Ortega four times. Ortega with a couple of stolen bases so far with his time with the Marlins coming up 
on Friday. He's on the move. The throw from Suzuki is not in time. Great job by Ortega. Got himself a pretty good jump and a good pitch to run on. It was an off-speed pitch. Close play at second base, but everything working in Ortega's favor. A good two or three steps before the ball was on its way. Now you know why so many throws to first. The base dealers now 11 for 12. He had his first career two stolen base game on Sunday against the Mets, and he gets his third stolen base with the Marlins and into scoring position for one of the best in the game, Brian Anderson, who's hitting 398 with runners in scoring position. That's third in baseball. Cuts and misses, and it's the ball in two strikes. Well, the challenge for the Marlins hitters tonight, and they certainly are aware of, of what Sanchez can do with the off-speed pitches, is that you go to get up there and you get it in your mind that I got to guard against the cutter, I got to guard against the changeup, and then you'll see that 90-91, and it will be by you before you blink. Well, Suzuki sets up at the top of the zone, and Sanchez goes even higher up than that the count two balls and two strikes and I was looking forward to this matchup coming into the series because you have two changeup specialists going head to head tonight is that allowed in today's game I'm not sure well, it is but game uh, that is uh, just all velocity now I actually circled it of the four games I thought this was the most interesting matchup I really did well that at 90 miles an hour on the black and Anderson set down back to back strikeouts for Sanchez two away Get you the Braves defensively. We've seen this defense most of the season. Acuna in left, Inciarte in center, Marquecas over in right, Camargo Swanson, Culberson getting the start at second base. Albies out of there. Freeman over at first, Suzuki behind the plate. The two outs now that'll bring up Derek Dietrich. And Dietrich takes a called strike. Dietrich yesterday was 0 for 4, walked and scored a run. This year against the Braves is 7 for 35 with three RBIs. Ortega away from second as Sanchez delivers, and that one fouled back. And it's 0 and 2. Now we've seen a similar pattern already from Sanchez. Obviously the slow stuff, the slower stuff down towards the bottom of the zone, including that cutter, even the cutter at 89, he's kind of kept it down. And then when the fastball, when he chooses to throw it, it's been at the top of the strike zone or higher. Dietrich has fared well in his career here in Atlanta at this ballpark, also at Turner Field prior to it. A 289 career hitter in Atlanta, 30 career games. Looking for a hit here to get the Marlins on the board early. Well, if you think there's any advantage lefty to righty against Sanchez tonight, there really isn't. Lefty's 201 with five home runs, righty's 213 with five. And he throws his entire arsenal both sides of the plate. Strike three. So after the leadoff single to Ortega, three consecutive strikeouts for Sanchez. He gets Dietrich looking. We'll see Trevor Richards when we come back.
Buffalo Low Fairs, nothing to hide. By W.B. Mason. Who but W.B. Mason, the official office supply company of the Miami Marlins. By Chevrolet. See your South Florida dealer today. And by your local Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. Back here at SunTrust Park. It is a scoreless game. Hitting to the bottom of the first inning. Ronald Acuna Jr. will lead things off for the Atlanta Braves. The rest of their starting lineup presented to you by Southwest. The only real change from yesterday's games, Ozzy Albies gets the day off. Charlie Culberson in the number two spot, but he has had good numbers against the Marlins this year. But the focus right now is on Ronald Acuna Jr., who for the third consecutive game has hit a leadoff home run. Twice yesterday and once tonight. 1-0 Atlanta. Now, in the second game yesterday, it was on the first pitch, a fastball. This a first pitch fastball from Trevor. That should tell you where Okuni is at right now. Kind of hinted about it in the open. He's all over fastballs. You throw him a fastball anywhere near the plate, he's doing things like this. I'll tell you right now, Paul Soto better be careful. He better be careful. This young man is starting to catch the nation by to take the nation by storm. I mean, wow. And now Culberson to left field. Ortega is back, and the Braves have gone back to back on two pitches. Well, the Atlanta Braves are the second best team in all of Major League Baseball, jumping on the first pitch. Came into tonight's ballgame with a 366 batting average, trailing only the Boston Red Sox. Well, two pitches in, 2 nothing Atlanta. Coberson getting the start in the two spot in replace of Albies. Certainly not the start to the ball game that Don Mattingly and Trevor Richards would have hoped for. Fourth time this year that the Atlanta Braves have gone back to back. And the 1-1 to Freddie Freeman misses outside. Well, let's start with the Cunha Jr. first. He had homered in four consecutive games. That was the longest streak by a Braves player since 2012. And he has now tied the franchise record homering in five straight games. He was also the youngest player in baseball history to homer in four straight. I'm assuming he's the youngest to homer in five straight. He's got an eight game hitting streak with seven homers. Here's the 2 2 on Freeman. Who loops one into center field. Two homers and a single for the Braves to open up the first. Well, for Trevor Richards, seven pitches into this ball game, and he's already down two nothing with a runner on base. We yeah. talked about it in the open and just how good he has been. Yeah, he really has. You know, the big fear is that the Atlanta Braves would do what they do best, which is jump on first pitch fastballs. Remember, he's got to be able to set up the changeup. It's not the idea that you're going to come out here and just feature your changeup and throw it from the first pitch of the ball game on. Well, good numbers on the season. Certainly, they've been going down 398 ERA, 193 ERA post All Star break. Just got to take a deep breath and reset right here. His last start, August 8th, against St. Louis, five and two thirds, four hits, couple of uh, home runs. That Carpenter got him. He's the first player to hit a changeup out for a home run against Richards. Lefties 186, righties 305. And that should tell you something. They also have the five home runs. And Trevor a little bit more vulnerable to the right side of the plate because of the arm side run with both the fastball and the changeup. He's fallen behind two balls and no strikes to Nick Markakis. Who yesterday over the two games was two for eight. 
Brewers in town before this on the homestand. Marquez is seven for 19 as he takes a called strike. Well, it's league leaders all over this Atlanta Braves lineup and roster. Marquez leading Major League Baseball with a 357 average with men on base. Marquez this year has done a terrific job. He leads the National League in hits with 149. He has had the most multi hit games, 48 of them. He's hitting 325 as we speak. And ball outside, 3 and 1. I love those 149 hits. 18 of them have come against the Marlins. He is 18 for 54. 11 runs scored, four doubles, a home run, six RBIs. Richards the benefit of the call there as the count runs full. Well the old baseball adage is if you're going to give up home runs make sure they are solo. Back to back solo home runs for the Braves here in the first. Freeman on the move as Marquez sends one into center field. And with that, Freeman, the little head start, gets him to third base. The Braves have runners on the corners. Still nobody out. Well, this lineup is chock full of professional hitters. And Arcake has just showed you what you really want to do with a changeup. 3-2 changeup, lined it into center field. Let's get you the Marlins defensively. Behind Richards, Ortega, Sierra, Anderson, that's your outfield. Rivera, Riddle, Castro, Dietrich over at first with JT behind the plate. Well, really, for the first time in, what, five, six starts, we have seen Trevor Richards with his back against the wall. I mean, he has been so crisp, so good. Yeah, that's what the Atlanta Braves can do to you right now. They've just been such a juggernaut offensively that they're looking for the first. Most of these guys in this lineup are looking for the first good fastball that they see, and they're putting their best swing on it. I mean, this isn't an example of you know the Atlanta Braves grinding out at bats, kind of working the count, trying to get themselves and in, in, in wear down the pitcher. This young team is hot, like batting practice hot. Fastball is coming in. What am I supposed to do with it? And that's what they've done already tonight. Camargo down to the count 0 and 2. Well, basically what the Atlanta Braves are kind of forcing anybody. This isn't a, a Marlins thing. Just a, anybody that's going up against them right now it has to come out with their A game out of the bullpen. Meaning you know the Arsenal ready to roll everything where it needs to be on the corners. Yeah the, the way that the Braves are are swinging now and have basically swung all season there are no get me over pitches. Well and, and that's what I, that's what I'm getting at. I mean you, you know you, most guys are coming in OK you know how many how many lineups are you going to face that are just ready to pounce on the first pitch right now. That's where Acuna is at and, and, and you know Culberson kind of follows it up thinking well I'm not taking a strike. <laughs> you know what I mean. It's like why would I take a strike he did. And what's he do he goes deep that's I mean that's where they're at right now. They have been rolling offensively. Ball and two strikes with the runners on the corners. Camargo fouls another one back. So a leadoff home run for Acuna Jr. And then the back to back home run, Charlie Culberson. A base hit for Freddie Freeman. A base hit for Nick Markakis. And then it's Johan Camargo who leads this team with 40 RBI since the beginning of June. Spoils another one. the 20th pitch of the first inning for Trevor Richards and it's lifted toward shallow left field riddle back will take it in there will be no advance from third Freeman didn't even tag up and that's the first out.
So he gets Camargo, who was four for eight yesterday. And that will bring up Ender Inciarte. Well, here's the thing. Rudely greeted, yes. But a well-placed ground ball, and you get out of it with two runs, and you're thinking, okay, not so bad. Doable. In fact, Inciarte accommodated just with that yesterday. There's the line drive, but Marquecas is back. Almost just like that had the ball been on the ground. So two outs, and now Kurt Suzuki. Eight homers and 36 RBIs on the season. He was one for three yesterday. Does have a home run, five RBIs against the Marlins in 2018. And he got the game, excuse me, got uh, the game one start. A little three game hitting streak going. He's three for 10. He's really been scuffling, though, over his last 18 games, hitting just 147. Well, he took a foul ball off the leg as a catcher, and now he fouls one off himself as a hitter. Only in the first inning. Looks to be all right, though. He's got that shin guard that's got that little flap that goes over the inside of the ankle. And wouldn't you know it, it hit him uh, like right where the shoelaces are, right on the top of the foot. <laughs> Just below it. Exactly. <laughs> Richards 0-1 misses inside. Well, the ERA is certainly spectacular the last five starts for Trevor Richards. He did lose the last two decisions, however in Philadelphia on the 3rd of August and against St. Louis on the 8th. This one up the third base line, a fair ball. Rivera over to first. Well, for all intents and purposes, not so bad. Back-to-back -back home runs for the Braves, 2-0.
Nothing lead. It's the Marlins. It's the Braves. So for tonight's Twitter and email Tuesday, we're going to use that hashtag NL East. We want to know your thoughts on the division, how it played out so far. Is there anything that surprised you? Tell us what you think. Send those emails to foxmarlins at gmail.com. Those tweets can go to at foxmarlins and be sure to use tonight's hashtag NL East. So guys, I'll ask you the same question. What do you think about how the division has played out so far? Well, it has certainly been fun to watch. Uh, Maybe not so much from the Marlins' perspective, but just from a baseball fan's perspective. In fact, the entire National League seems to be pretty wide open uh, at this point. But in terms of the National League East, I think these last, uh, what, six weeks or so are going to be fun. As Starlin Castro dumps a base hit in the left center field, a leadoff knock here in the second. Thought about it, but will stay put. Holly, what say you? I'm excited. I mean, listen, everything about this division, and I suppose there's maybe two shockers, and it's not the Philadelphia Phillies, and it's certainly not the Atlanta Braves. Uh, of course, they played great baseball really from the beginning of the season. The only thing that surprised me more than anything is the team we're getting ready to go see, the Nationals. I, I just I think a lot of people around baseball really surprised as much talent as they've got on that team, where they sit in this division. I, I, I look at the Mets, and I think, boy, oh, boy, we've told that story before. So, yeah, great starting staff, but, again, they've run into their own issues as well. I suppose I'm a little surprised they're as far down as they are. I thought they'd contend a little bit more, but the Nationals, my goodness, I think that's that's more of a national story yeah, absolutely. <laughs> when you think about it. Absolutely. I mean, the, the ebbs and flows of are they going to trade Bryce Harper? They are going to trade. They're not. They will. They won't. As this one is chopped right side for Culberson. To get Riddle and up to second goes Castro. Yeah, I mean, it captivated the nation for about 24 hours there on the 31st. And how does that conversation even become possible in, in today's game with the Nationals? That's that, 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 that wasn't going to happen. The reason he's there, I mean, if they thought that this season was going to happen this way, they would have explored that in, over the winter if Bryce Harper wasn't part of the future. You know what I mean? That's, Absolutely. that's how far it had gotten out of control. Point where Bryce Harper's name's coming up in trade rumors. All right. One out for Yadiel Rivera getting the start at third base. In uh, this third game of this series, the Marlins lost a third baseman in each of the first two games yesterday. First, Martin Prado with the left quad strain. Ten day DL for him. And then Miguel Rojas base running kind of jammed his his ankle into the third base bag. No DL as of now. A, uh, a decision could be made in the next, uh, next couple of days for Miggy. Oh. But for tonight, it is Rivera at the hot corner. <laughs> to third for Camargo, who looks Castro back to away. Miami, join us for our Neighborhood Night Series. We are hosting a downtown Miami night at Marlins Park on Saturday, August 25th. You can start at just $12 for all residents. For more information, visit marlins.com slash neighborhood. So in steps Magnioris Sierra, runner on second and two outs. Sierra 0 for 3 yesterday. Grounds one to Swanson behind the second base bag. That slight double clutch. That slight double clutch. And Sierra's speed able to beat it out. A little bobble right there. Not even a double clutch, but a bobble. Yeah, that's all it takes. Sierra's got that kind of speed. He's going to beat just about any throw across the diamond if there is any, any bobble. you got to field it cleanly with him running. They're going to give him a base hit for that. Nevertheless, first and third, two out for Trevor Richards. Leave the door open to crack, and Sierra's speed will bust it open. So that extends the inning. Suzuki sets up low and away. Sierra takes second base. 
uncontested. Credit for a stolen base, and now there are two runners in scoring position, but there are two strikes on Richards. There you go. Trevor's got a couple RBIs on the season, a couple of hits to go along with it. Two more RBIs on the bases. If he could do something with two outs, he follows that one back. Be nice if he could find a way to bring these runs home. Kind of a tone for that first inning. The back-to-back -back homers allowed to Acuna Jr. and Culberson. Here's the one-two. Defensive swing. <laughs> it's the emergency hack was out there. <laughs> Not sure you could swing much later. Than what you saw from Richards. My goodness. Nice job there. Defending the strike zone. Castro with third. Sierra at second. Here it comes. Swung on and missed for strike three. Sanchez works around a little bit of trouble in the second inning. Marlins trail 2-0. West Airlines are giving you an opportunity to enter for a chance to win an all-inclusive stay in Nassau in the Bahamas on Labor Day weekend for the Southwest Airlines Summer Days Getaway. Just tweet hashtag Southwest Summer Days Sweeps and hashtag sponsored to at Fox Sports FL for your chance to win. Back here at SunTrust Park, Paul Severino, Todd Hollisworth, Jessica Blaylock, Craig Minervini, Jeff Nelson doing the pre and post game show from here as well. So the uh, the gang is all here in Atlanta. A 2-0 deficit for the Marlins. As Trevor Richards back out for the second inning, he'll face the 8-9-1 hitters for the Braves. Dansby Swanson, Anibal Sanchez, and Ronald Acuna Jr. For Swanson, nine homers, 42 RBIs this season. A former first overall pick by the Arizona Diamondbacks before being traded here to Atlanta basically traded back home. A Georgia kid who takes a called strike. You're absolutely right. Well, after that introduction, which was a pretty spectacular one when he first got up to the big leagues, a little hit or miss with the offense. The defense has been solid. The offense has been uh, a little more inconsistent. Oh. He's 
0 for 3 yesterday. Let's have a home run on the homestand. Again, the Brewers in town prior to the four game set here with the Marlins. This one is popped up right side and will get into the seats. Got a home run and five RBIs this year against the Marlins, does Swanson. Also scored six runs. Braves are playing some pretty good baseball as of late. They have won 12 of 16 overall. A couple of games over 500 over the course of the last 32 games. And with the doubleheader sweep yesterday and the Phillies idle picking up a full game on the Phils and they have a one game lead in the National League East at the start of plays. This one is back and into the crowd two and two. One of the starters in their last 16 ball games have really set the tone. We've talked about it I think in both directions clearly the offense uh, getting some things going but the starters nine and one with a 283 ERA their last 16 games. Starts with starting pitching. We talked about this a little bit yesterday. Sure, you got guys like Newcomb who have been you know, relatively good all year long, save for a, a rough start here or there. Fulton Avich was an all star. Of course, Julio Tehran has been a, a mainstay in this rotation for the last number of years. As Swanson swings and misses for the first strikeout tonight for Richards. And they also picked up Kevin Gosman, who will get the start tomorrow. Now, and I think that's one advantage. I know people have gone back and forth in a lot of the conversation. You know, everybody's favorite question to ask in the National League East right now is, do you got the Braves or you got the Phillies? And give us your reason why. I keep seeing all the debates all over the national TV circuit and you know, everything else that's going on there. It's a, it's, it's a fantastic conversation. Both these teams uh, are going to go head to head all the way down to the wire. I mean, literally, I think they have seven games at the end of the season against each other. So <laughs> this thing's going to get fun. The point being, you know, I, I look at the Atlanta Braves and I think some people have said, well, you know, I, I kind of like the Philly rotation a little bit better. They got Arietta and, you know, they may have a little bit more up there. The way that this uh, Braves rotation kind of breaks down, they've got a lot of diversity. I mean, I love, I mean, look what they've got. You know, Sanchez going tonight. I mean, he's got the, the cutter and the change up. And again, doesn't throw as hard. Fulte, he's, he's, he's your slider guy uh, with 98 miles an hour. This one a dribbler too short. Riddle has all the time in the world. And Sanchez kind of slowed it down on the way down to first base. There are two outs. That is now an 0 for 40 skid for Anibal Sanchez. And not an 0 for 40 for this young man. First pitch of the game for the third game in a row. Donald Acuna Jr. with a Solo home run, a leadoff home run. Last time that any player hit leadoff home runs in three straight games, Brady Anderson in 1996. But he is kept in the yard and kept off the bases to end the second ball. A 1-2-3 frame for Trevor Richards.
SunTrust Park. A 2-0 Braves lead as we go to the top of the third inning. Hey, Marlins fans, now you can stream games live on your mobile device with Fox Sports Go, presented by Coors Light. Download the app and take Fox Sports Florida and Marlins baseball wherever you go. Top of the order due up for the Marlins here in the third. Rafael Ortega, JT Realmuto, and Brian Anderson against Anibal Sanchez. Sanchez 32 pitches through the first two innings. First time through the Marlins batting order registering four strikeouts. First pitch to Ortega is outside for ball one. A single in the stolen base first time around for Ortega. He was left on base as the starter tonight for the Braves struck out the next three Marlins he faced. Low again three balls and no strikes. You know, the real challenge tonight for the Marlins is going to be to lay off the secondary stuff at the bottom of the zone. See the approach from Sanchez. He really likes to hang out down there. It's a four pitch walk first free pass issued by Sanchez. You don't miss the hottest matchup of the summer. Catch your Marlins as they take on the Yankees August 21st and August 22nd. Don't miss the Yankees first visit to Marlins Park since 2015. Get your tickets today at Marlins.com slash tickets. Yes, two teams split a two game set in the Bronx in early to mid April. We talk a lot about the National League East and how the Marlins will be seeing a lot of the Braves and the Phillies and the Washington Nationals. They also see three Nash, uh, American League East teams the rest of the way. Trip to Boston after, uh, I believe that's the next road trip, right? JT Real Muto with a drive out to left field. Acuna Jr. is on the track. And that's where he stops, but the ball goes into the seats. A two-run home run for JT Real Muto, and this game is tied. A no-doubter off the bat of JT Real Muto. How about it? Well, JT really starting to find that stroke here in Atlanta. Some good signs of life as he was kind of working his way through a little mini slump. His changeup splits the plate, and he saw it, recognized it up enough, and delivered. My goodness. So back to even. Here's Brian Anderson on a few hops to Swanson over at short for the first out. I think some people wondered. You know some of the changes that the Marlins have made the last few weeks injuries playing into it now too. How many pitches is JT Real Muto going to see these next six weeks. Well, And that's a great point. Well, we've talked about that a number of times here over the last few days but here's the kicker Ortega has been on base both times. You put Ortega on base you've got the threat of the stolen base you've got JT hitting behind him and let's remember Sanchez paid quite a bit of attention to Ortega that first at bat end up giving up the stolen base take is on he's struggling with his command what's he do he makes a mistake and JT makes him pay and now Dietrich to the right side uh, it's Culberson and there are two outs well, it was only uh, the last time we were in, what was it, about two weeks ago when we were here in Atlanta, I think we were having a conversation of why isn't the ball flying out of SunTrust Park? Because the raindrops knocking it down. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, things have changed, haven't they, over the last few games here? I mean, yes. I'm willing to go launching pad. Yeah. My goodness. We have seen three home runs tonight. Certainly saw enough home runs yesterday to satisfy in a doubleheader. Strike at the top of the zone to Starlin Castro, who singled and stole second base.
Single for Castro in the second inning. Over the course of his last 41 games, he is 50 for 160. Over 300 batting average as Castro takes the ball down low. And they'd love to see Starlin get hot again. Went through a little extended uh, a little bit of a struggle and all of a sudden just heated up for about those two or three weeks you know, leading into the All Star break. Another walk by Sanchez this inning. That's two in the course of uh, four batters, five batters. He didn't have any walks his last time out against the Washington Nationals. He has had a tough time finding the strike zone here in the third. Marlins have made him pay. A walk to Ortega, a two run home run for Real Muto. Well, the Marlins have done a nice job laying off again those secondary pitches out over the plate, but down. It's kind of where Sanchez is missing, and then he's trying to throw his fastball to the corners and missing as well. didn't walk anybody wasn't out there that long last time out just a couple of innings of work before he left with that calf injury on the comebacker runner goes throw to second is not in time now Castro has a steal of second base that's three steals tonight one for Ortega one for Sierra and now one for Castro now the Marlins not known for stealing bases early on this year. This offense has struggled just a bit, and they've actually gotten a little bit more aggressive on the base. It's good to see. They've got to find ways to create runs and opportunities with runners in scoring position. Sanchez is, as I mentioned, somebody that you can run on. It's not that he has allowed that many stolen bases even coming into tonight's ball game. It's just the high success rate. He's slow to the plate and uses a lot of secondary pitches. The pitch that Starlin ran on, 72 miles an hour. Can Riddle make him pay? It'll be a 2-2 pitch from Sanchez. In there for a call, strike three. That's five strikeouts for Sanchez, but the Marlins tie it up on a Real Muto two-run home run.
Down to the last of the third here at SunTrust Park. This copyrighted telecast is presented by Authority of the Miami Marlins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form of the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Miami Marlins. It will be Charlie Culberson to lead things off. And then Freddie Freeman and Nick Markakis. Four runs on the board, two solo home runs for Atlanta, and a two-run home run for the Marlins. But, of course, those two home runs for Atlanta on the first two pitches of the ball game. One off the bat of this man right here, Charlie Culberson, who takes a pitch low and away. So he hit the first pitch, just like Acuna Jr. did before him. And the last time the players hit the first two pitches for two home runs to lead off a game, involved the Atlanta Braves, but it was Jimmy Rollins and Placido Polanco back in 2004. As this one is skied out to left center field. Who's going to get it? It'll be Sierra for the first out. Now you have four Marlins players going for a high pop-up off the bat. That elevated fastball popped up by Culberson. As you see, everybody converge. Sierra has priority over everybody and ultimately takes control right there. It would go Sierra, Ortega, Riddle, and then Castro. I always like it when the center fielder takes control. Castro ran about six miles to get out there, roughly. <laughs> He's got his running shoes on today. He's already got a stolen base. <laughs> Marlins gather for a team photo, but Sierra makes the play anyway. And here is the 0-1 to Freddie Freeman, who takes a ball north of the zone, and it's 1-1. One and one. A base hit for Freeman in the first. He's had a few of those against the Marlins this year. Now 24 for 54. StatCast AI powered by AWS shows you how the Marlins play the infield against Freddie Freeman. Well, we tried just about anything to quiet his bat. Last Brave, he's got seven home runs and 15 RBIs this year against Miami, by the way. The last Brave hitter to hit at least seven home runs in a single season against an opponent was Jeff Frank Hoare. Also had seven against the Marlins back in 2006. Comes the 2-2 to Freeman inside on the hands, and the count is full. together. Team doubles. Nick Markick is leading the way for the Atlanta Braves. We're second in Major League Baseball with 247. Markakis has 37 all by himself. In fact, fifth among active players with 468. Two base hits. Takes a strike. Now this is a talented bunch line to line. I talk about it all the time. Certainly we've seen enough of the Braves of late. Can hit their home runs, but it really isn't in their approach that they're trying for home runs, and I think that actually means something in today's game. I think there's a number of players who do. This one down the right field line should stay in the park for Anderson, who makes the catch. For Johan Camargo, who has six doubles this year against the Marlins. Speaking of doubles, that is. <laughs> Camargo, a flyout victim, his first time up. Trevor 
stayed away exclusively. And Camargo was the first out of the ball game here in the five spot. First four Braves reached. It's going fastball away, change up away. I'll tell you what, Richards done a pretty nice job. The change up has not been as good tonight as it has been lately. What he's been doing is being quite vertical with his fastball. That one skips away from Real Muto and Freeman up to second. Now this change up a little bit too much depth. In fact, it hits well out in front of home plate. JT unable to keep it in front. That's kind of what Richards is battling right now. That change up really hasn't been there for him tonight. There's been a couple of good ones, but honestly, He's been much better using his fastball up and down in the zone. Well, that one was good. That was. But it's been a mix. I mean, right. it's much like the one that was right before it. With a 55-footer and then a really good one. I mean, that can be okay at times, but let's be honest, you don't see much of a breaking ball. Pitch. Yeah, one thing through this stretch, Paul, we talked about an awful lot. It hasn't been more curveballs. It hasn't been more secondary pitches. It's actually just been more changeup. Changeup and fastball has really been what his arsenal has been all about. If the changeup isn't there, where does he go? Well, it puts a lot of pressure on that fastball command. Part of that, that uh, again, that he's working on it at third pitch. But maybe part of the reason why the third time through the order batting average jumps to 291. Trying to figure out how to get guys out a third, maybe even a fourth time through. Now that was an outstanding change up there on a 3 1 hitter's count. On 3 2. Camargo with a base hit to center field. Freeman hits the green line around third base. And it's another two out RBI for the Braves. That has been the story this year for Atlanta against Miami. The 47th run that they have scored with two outs this year against the Marlins. Now, this is a fastball at the knees. Catches a little bit too much plate, but again, that's kind of what you fall victim to. A couple of good change-ups get him back into this count, but the fastball is what undoes it. Scamago rips it back through the box. Freddie Freeman scores easily. It's like even that sequencing there, the change-up, the pass ball, or I should say wild pitch, moves Freeman into place. And now it's Ciarte with a fair ball into the corner. Camargo on his way to third. He's still running. Here comes Camargo with the fourth Braves run. Yeah, you know, much like the first inning, Paul, back-to-back -back pitches. And in fact, back-to-back -back fastballs. First by Camargo, now by Inciarte. And another two-out run. RBI triple for Ender Inciarte. Well, just as, as it was crucial in the first inning after giving up the, the two home runs on two pitches to start, to kind of limit the damage right there, there were base runners after that. Again, it was the back-to-back -back home runs, back-to-back -back singles, Freeman and Marcakis. But then Richards was able to work out of that inning with just the two runs allowed. Marlins able to tie it back up. But then it becomes now this is a shutdown inning to keep the momentum on the side of the Marlins. But here we go again with two outs. The Braves just refuse to quit in an inning. Well, four of their six hits tonight have come on the first pitch.
This is Kurt Suzuki. Well, they say you're going to get one good pitch to hit every at bat. And if it's the first one, the Braves are ready for it. Ciarte's fourth triple this year has given the Braves a two run lead here in the third. Richards trying to keep it right there. Just outside, two and one. This season, Richards had allowed three runs or fewer, including each of his last six. But already four runs on the board tonight for Atlanta. And now Suzuki lines one to Ortega. And that will do it. But the Braves get the two back that they allowed in the top of the inning and leave this one four to two. Half of the fourth inning, Paul Severino, Todd Hollinsworth, Jessica Blaylock here with you. Also, Craig Minervini and Jeff Nelson along for the ride here in Atlanta. So that means they will be on the field both tonight after the game and tomorrow for the pregame show in advance of Jose Urania's start. South Florida Honda dealers present Marlins live with Craig and Nelly, Jose Urania, Kevin Gosman. The two starting pitchers tomorrow in the last of this four game series before Marlins head to Washington D.C. get an off day in the nation's capital and then a three game set with the Nationals over the weekend. Here is Yadiel Rivera to lead things off. He takes ball one. It's Rivera Sierra and Richards here in the fourth against Anibal Sanchez. Rivera grounded out the third his first time up. have had the leadoff man on in every inning. It's just really been a matter of 
Listen, the Marlins would love to have more offense against the Braves, too, but they just need to figure out a way to quiet the offense of Atlanta as well. Another leadoff base runner for the Marlins as Rivera shoots one the other way. Well, that's four for four. He's putting guys on base. Now he's got to get them in. It's easy to beat the heat when you become an energy-saving expert. Go to FPL.com slash beat the heat. So a base hit for Yachty. That will bring up Sierra. Looks to be swinging away. Takes a called strike. We've certainly talked a lot about the bunting skill and the uh, improvement thereof for Sierra. They are expecting it with Camargo in on the grass. But this one slapped to short. Swanson the flip. But they will only get the one at second base. Well, that'll set up a bunting opportunity for Richards as he makes his way to home plate. Well, whether it's bunting or just getting the ball on the ground, I mean, that has got to be part of it. Listen, we've again heard a lot about the pop that's in Sierra's bat too, but Freeman may have, uh, or at least he thinks he may have tagged Sierra on the foot. Waiting for his bench to check. So he thinks he got that right foot before the left foot got to the bag, I assume. And that's how he motioned toward, towards the Braves dugout that he did that, but it doesn't look like they're going to review it. No. So. Anyway, point being for Sierra, get the ball on the ground, right? I mean, anything that's got anything that's less than a rocket on the infield, he's got a chance to beat it out. Yeah, he's got to use his asset, which is his speed. Saw it his first time up, beat out an infield hit. One little tiny bobble, and he's going to be safe at first most, most of the time. Strikeout back in the second for Richards. One of five for Sanchez. But to foul. So I'll tell you what, it may not go this way. I'd almost rather see Sierra attempt to steal this base. If Richards and uh, take an opportunity to drive him in. Marlins three for three tonight on stolen bases. Of course, that's why all the attention is being paid over at first from Sanchez. Richard squares, and this one gets down, and then Sanchez bobbles it and throws it into the back. It's going to be safe. Of Richards. He was right on the line. Nothing wrong there. That's on Sanchez. A lot of times we see this. <laughs> Everybody thinks the runner's out of the baseline. Trevor did nothing wrong. Got the bunt down and stayed, got out of the way of the tag, but kind of got right back in the baseline. So he's got to stay in that box. Yeah, we'll stay. Take another look, right? So, right, that's where he moved back into line. He's got a right, he's got a right to, you know, create his own line right there as he tries to get out of the way. So the throw hits Richards in the back. If he were outside that box, he'd if the throw in, gets him in the back, be, he'd be in trouble. Right. Well, it'll be a sacrifice and an E1 that sets up first and second one out for Rafael Ortega, who swings and hits oh. one pass Culberson into right center field. Sierra will score easily to third goes Richards on his way to second. Ortega is in there safely. And it's now 4-3. Absolutely love it. To Ortega has truly proven to be a spark plug for this Marlins lineup. On base for the third time, hard hit ball. It's under Culberson's glove. And he smoked this. I know it was on the ground, but it was a good swing. And the Marlins taking full advantage of the error. 
103.8 off the bat. Oh. And now JT Realmuto. Now making the most of an opportunity. Rafael Ortega. A single and a double tonight. As JT lines this one foul. Yeah, fair to say he's been a spark plug. Absolutely. Marlins have used a number of different players in that leadoff spot throughout the year, trying to find the right guy that can set the tone, set the table for the offense. As JT with a base hit in the left field. That'll bring home Richards Ortega around third. And JT Realmino brings home two more. <laughs> it is 5-4 Miami. Well, JT Real Muto is back. It is good to see this Marlins offense. It certainly needs the run production from JT when he is on his game, and we've seen it in the last few games. This two-strike pitch, it's a changeup up at the top of the zone. And you hear the reaction from Sanchez, clearly frustrated with where he left that. The Marlins have done themselves a huge favor, and offense is rolling, and got the lead back. I believe the first lead of this series. Well, yeah, and they scored a run in each of the games yesterday, and a couple of leadoff home runs yesterday for Acuna, one tonight for Acuna Jr. as well, but it has been Real Muto. With the four RBIs. After a meeting on the mound with the pitching coach Chuck Hernandez. Brian Anderson will come to the plate as the Marlins have answered back. These teams exchanging runs. Marlins had two in the top of the third. Braves got two back. Marlins answer with three of their own. As Anderson fouls it back to the screen. Time for the Florida Lottery in-game jackpot. Been an awful lot made about Soto and Acuna Jr. in the top spots for the National League Rookie of the Year. But how valuable has this rookie been to the Marlins? The numbers in wins and losses for Brian Anderson. When he's good, at least to some degree, you can make the case that they are good. He sets the tone and the team follows. Well, there's no doubt about it. He has always been in the Rookie of the Year conversation, certainly in the National League. He's been one of their most valuable assets on offense. As impressive as those numbers are, so is his approach. Looks to go the other way. Knows when to pull. Likes to shorten up with two strikes. in the Braves bullpen. A ball and two strikes to Brian Anderson. Struck out and grounded out tonight. Takes that one low, even up the count, two balls and two strikes. Good to see the Marlins respond offensively. Only 34 runs in their last 14 games coming in. Line, that one on a hop, knocked down by Swanson, who recovers to get Anderson at first. I'll tell you what, Paul, no shortage of exit velocity tonight off the Marlins' bats. They have been all over Sanchez. That ball hit. 104.8 miles an hour off the bat. I mean, there's been exit velocity on just about every ball put in play. And this was with two strikes. One hopper, my goodness. Well, into scoring position is Real Muto for Derek Dietrich. You hit a ball that hard, you wonder why a guy gets frustrated, huh? 
square one up the way that Anderson just did. Don't get me started. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you just you live with it. You realize you're playing a really silly game. Does it does it actually even out now that you are, can step oh. away? You don't get the little flares that fall this in. This game makes no sense at all. The defense holds the ball and there's eight defenders. Give me a break. <laughs> And they could put three on the right side like the Braves just did against Dietrich. Yeah. I got you. I got you. Three runs for the Marlins. They take a 5-4 lead in the fourth. See low fares, nothing to hide. The Cleveland Clinic, stiff joints, aches and pains. Trust Cleveland Clinic, Florida, the number one orthopedic care in Florida. And by Simply Healthcare, live the simply life. Back here at SunTrust Park in Atlanta, Paul Severino, Todd Hollinsworth, Jessica Blaylock back with you. A 5-4 Marlins lead. It's been some back and forth through the first three and a half innings tonight. These teams uh, exchanging gut punches well out and it's good to see of course uh, Trevor needs to keep this in check here in the fourth that's what you want to see him do you need that shutdown inning you mentioned it a little bit earlier Here's at the bottom of the Braves lineup you'd really love to see it here and the reason being you certainly know the potency of this Braves offense they have poured it on this season against the Marlins they've averaged seven runs a game and I mean, with that in mind you know what's likely to happen Swanson to left field. Ortega is back and he makes the catch right at the wall. Now, great job by Ortega. Good read off the bat. Swanson didn't get all of it. Oh, nice job making his way into the corner. He certainly covered a lot of ground. Hey, let's go ahead. Why not? Fresh catch of the day. Bonefish grill. There you go. Didn't quite have to go over the wall to rob it, but a nice running catch. Kind of running parallel with the fence. We've already seen him have to uh, navigate the left field walls a couple of times in this week or so that he's been with the Marlins. But that one able to make the catch. Hang on for the first out here in the fourth. 0 oh, and 1 to Anibal Sanchez, who takes a ball upstairs. Sanchez, a ground ball to Riddle back in inning number two. So Sanchez is 0 for his last 40. Yeah, I'm not breaking that down, man. No, 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 you don't have to. Thanks. I wasn't asking you to. That's fine. <laughs> it's his second longest streak without a hit. He was 0 for 43 at one point. Earlier oh, well, there career. you go. So he's just warming up. That's right. He's been down this road before. I'll tell you what, regardless of what we've seen tonight, I know he's a former Marlin. Some nice years with the ball club. He's really turned his career around. And the last, I kind of told you at the beginning of the ball game, 
He had really kind of fallen on hard times his last three seasons in Detroit. Had a 5 6 7 ERA. He's found himself oh. here, the Atlanta Braves. Goes down looking. Second strikeout tonight for Richards, and out number two in the fourth. Back home runs, Acuna Jr. and Culberson on the first two pitches of the ball game. And singles for Freeman and Marquecas right after that, but kept the Braves quiet after the home runs in the first inning. Bravo scored two runs in the bottom of the third. No thoughts of a swing there for Acuna Jr. Well, and probably not surprised, of course. What did he do? First at bat, he jumped all over a fastball. Richards got him on a changeup, and he swung at his second at bat. He got in the box with the idea that he was going to take all the way, <laughs> knowing another changeup was coming. Oh. <laughs> Didn't look like he was all too, all too thrilled to swing there, either. Perhaps the gauge is the sleeve, that left sleeve. The higher the sleeve goes, the more geared up for a swing he is. Well, I think he's just playing cat and mouse with Richards guessing at what he's throwing. He knows the difference. He's not he's not up there trying to separate the fastball from the changeup. He's just sitting on one or the other right now. Well, that's the thing when it, with a pitcher like Richards again generally speaking a two pitch pitcher fastball and the changeup but then you think about the quadrants and it maximizes those two pitches if you can go up or down or in or out. And that's what Richards talks about after every every start basically breaking well, things down and, and that's really what's kept him in this ball game. I mean you go back to early on what he was dealing with they jumped all over his fastball problem was the changeup really hadn't been established and still really hasn't been established that much again we've seen a few good ones but some not so good as well. He's done a pretty decent job moving the ball around the zone. I know he's given up four runs. That's a rocket up the middle for Coogan Jr. A two out single. Well, the, the two out runs, yes, but also the two out hits. Entering the day, the Braves 370 with two outs against the Marlins this year. Here's Culberson, his ninth home run of the season back in the first inning. Pitch number 75. After the time call. Well, the changeup has not been established tonight the way it had and has been as of late. Against the Rays, nine swings and misses on the changeup. Ten swings and misses, the two starts against the Nationals and the Phillies. Thirteen swings and misses on the changeup in his last start against the Cardinals. There's a base hit up the middle for Culberson, who just continues to hit against the Marlins as it gets away from Sierra and to third goes Acuna Jr. Braves have him on the corners here in the fourth. Well, the Atlanta Braves trying to create more two out magic. Culberson, a hard hit ball back up the middle. Sierra had a hard time. I was wondering if this was maybe going to happen tonight. Unfortunately, it happened to Sierra. I was watching the cut of the grass today, and the ball snaking just a little bit out there. We got him. Also picked his head up just a bit, too, as it hit off that finger. It's a nasty combination for an outfielder if you're not careful. So now two on for Freddie Freeman. You say that the ball snakes out there. It's because of the way that this particular and other outfields are have that cross cut. Right? Well, you have to understand. If you look out at the outfield, you see a, a, essentially a pattern. It looks like a checker pattern, right? Well, in order to get that, the darker, you know, might be a little bit longer than the lighter, but it's one or the other. And the point is, is that as the ball's coming out to you and the seams hit it, it makes it jump a little bit to the left and to the right. We call it snaking. 
And it kind of looks like a snake kind of slithering out there. Now it's not as maybe as broad as you would think, but it does move around. And here's the deal. If you drop your head or you take your eyes off the ball, just those three or four inches to the left yeah. to the right causes the ball to hit off your glove if you're not looking all the way down. And that's essentially what got Sierra right there. Well, we talked to Perry Hill in San Francisco. One of the reasons why he loves it out there is there is no cross right. cut. Well, and again, it's, you know, the aesthetics of it. Yeah, it looks great. Looks fantastic. <laughs> well, it's Except when it like. costs you some errors. 5-4, Marlins through four. Four lead as we move to the top of the fifth inning. Starlin Castro to lead things off, then JT Riddle and Yadiel Rivera against Anibal Sanchez. What? Today for Castro, he's reached base twice a single in the second. He walked and stole a base in the third. Screen still 0 and 2. Started the day tied for sixth in the National League with 130 hits. He's of course added to that. He's also broken a tie with Scooter Jeanette. Most hits for a second baseman in the National League. Hitting 283 as he steps away from that one. Two balls and two strikes from Sanchez. Now this is the first time all season Sanchez has allowed five runs in a game. It's the strikeout of Castro, and that is out number one. We check in with Jessica Blaylock. Hey, Paul, we've been keeping an eye on the Marlins minor league affiliates, and just yesterday there was a diving catch in Greensboro that needs to be on a highlight reel. Marlins 2018 first-round pick Connor Scott robbed Asheville's Jeff Moberg of extra bases with this diving grab in center field. Nicely done, Connor. Guys, always fun to see a great defensive play like that. I think Brian Anderson could even appreciate that one. No doubt. Heck of a play there by Connor Scott. Nicely done in center field. Get to see that athleticism, the ability to uh, reroute there at the last second. Oh, starting to come back over his head. Is that right arm to? That's a pretty incredible catch. Out to shallow center field, and Ciarte calls off Swanson, and Riddle is retired for the second out. Well, 
prior to the flyout, the sixth strikeout of the night for Anibal Sanchez. Here is Yadiel Rivera. Misses upstairs. Well, Yadi, a base hit his last time up. Real nice approach. Lined one to right. Got things going in the fourth. And is Camargo at third. That's why they call it the hot corner. Got to him quick. But a one, two, three inning on 10 pitches. 5-4. Mark Kotze. It's the Braves' second cycle in franchise history. It's five for five against the Chicago Cubs. Atlanta now has three cycles. Freddie Freeman hit the third back in 2016 against the Cincinnati Reds. Kotze was a Marlins first round pick, ninth overall from Cal State Fullerton. Played with the Marlins from 97 to 2000, 08 with the Braves. Markakis takes a called strike. Bottom of the fifth here at SunTrust Park. It's Markakis, Camargo, and Inciarte. Katze, known not only for his hitting, but one of the most accurate arms I ever played against in the game in the outfield. Didn't have the strongest, but I mean, goodness gracious, he could dime, dime it to the bag anywhere. First, second, third, he could put it right where you needed it. Who had the strongest arm that you played with? Was it mm. Mondesi? Yeah, probably Mondesi. El Canyon, as we called him. <laughs> this one in foul territory off this, the netting. So no play for Rivera or Real Muto. One and two on Marquecas. Yeah, I remember Monty came in. I think it was his second or third year, maybe his fourth year in the league. I mean, obviously, I was a couple years behind him, and uh, he was in spring training. Pulled up his sleeve and, and showed me. He said, you know, what do you think? I said, Cannon. He's like, El Canyon. I said, yeah, I think you've got that figured out. <laughs> the thing about Mondi was that it was incredibly unorthodox. Like, his mechanics weren't like, you know, oh, he gets over the top, you right, know, nice, right. good arm, arm angle, good rotation. I mean, it just worked. Oh, he just flat out bullied the baseball. It went where he wanted it to. It was kind of like a gunslinging quarterback. Right. who does uh, color commentary for the Atlanta Braves. Jeff Francoeur had a bit of a uh, Kenyon too. Yeah, he did. He could do it too. No doubt about it. He put the ball on the bag. Flanked by Joe Simpson and Chip Carey as Marquecas taps back to Richards for the first out here in the fifth. And 
And the guy that went into the Hall of Fame, one of the guys that went into the Hall of Fame this year, Vlad Guerrero. <laughs> my, oh, my. Well, he did. In, in early in his career, the thing about Vlad, he was that you could run on him just a bit because he wasn't incredibly accurate early on. Okay. He had the best arm in the game, but at times would be, you know, up in Montreal. I mean, he would spray it just a bit. So we were still about running on him a little. You were willing to kind of roll the dice. I mean, he'd get you a few times. But again, there was a certain time he'd be up the line a little bit. Like, the ball would beat you. It just wasn't <laughs> where, where it needed to be. And as he got to about his third or fourth year in the league, oh, he started to figure it out. And, like, I need to... A one hop into home with a little more velocity on it gets the gets the result. I don't have to just air it out to all the bases or to the plate. He really started to throw guys out even more. Two balls and no strikes on Johan Camargo. Well, the Marlins currently have a guy who's got a pretty good arm. <laughs> pretty good arm, right? Very good arm. Elite, some would say. Brian Anderson. He I say elite. one the other night there, what, 99 point something yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. It's all blurring together. It is, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it was only a few hours ago. Wasn't it really? It. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it could have been in Milwaukee for all I know. I don't oh, know. That's right. <laughs> Bottom line is he got it up to 99. Camargo gets this one out to left field. A one-out base hit. And a left. Time for the Chevrolet Prospect Spotlight. Austin Dean, a fourth-round pick of the Marlins back in 2012. The Marlins Minor League Player of the Week led all minor leaguers with a... That's not an OPS right there, that 1353. That's the slugging percentage. The OPS over 2,000. I don't think you ever really see an OPS over 2,000, but that's exactly what Austin Dean had last week. An excellent job with the baby cakes and AAA. Also with the baby cakes, Peter O'Brien, who the Marlins added to their organization roughly two months ago or so. A couple of home runs, four home runs over his last six games for O'Brien. Ciarte an RBI triple back in the third inning. That was on the heels of the Johan Camargo RBI single. Ciarte ripped it into the right field corner. Marlins outfielders kind of really have him shaded over the other way with this hitter's count. This is a four pitch walk to Inciarte and the Braves have two on one out here in the fifth. The catcher, number 24, Kurt Second walk tonight for Trevor Richards. Of course it's a Twitter and email Tuesday. Send your questions to at Fox Marlins to the hashtag NL East. One name is waiting waiting and we'll now go out and chat with the pitcher Trevor Richards. Well, a, uh, a quick trip around the National League East. Speaking of our hashtag tonight, the Boston Red Sox with a 2-1 lead in Philadelphia. Red Sox just took the lead a moment ago on a Brock Holt home run. Reese Hoskins has his 23rd. Sandy Leone with his fifth. No home runs yet tonight for J.D. Martinez. We'll uh, check to see if he's healthy. Only seems to hit one or two a day. The New York Mets are currently trailing the Baltimore Orioles right now in the top of the eighth. And the Washington Nationals are in St. Louis down 3 0. Javi Guerra up in the pen for the Marlins. Now, Trevor, 91 pitches. This is probably going to be the extent of his outing tonight. Juan really wanting him to bear down in this situation, trying to get out of it. Hoping to get him through five. Into the Marlins dugout. 0-1-1 to Suzuki. The ground out and a line out to left. Let's see if that first pitch leads to Pretty good result. Throwing too many breaking balls tonight, but that was a first pitch curveball that Suzuki was way out in front on.
The one one from Richards misses oh. a little low. And I'll tell you what. That a Braves team certainly came in prepared. To at least defend a little bit better against the changeup than we've seen most teams this season. He's thrown a number of decent breaking ball, or excuse me, changeups out over home plate. You kind of see the Atlanta Braves hitters doing their best to track it all the way to JT Real Muto's glove. Fakes that one off into left field. Camargo around third. He will score. An RBI single for Kurt Suzuki has tied this game in the fifth. will bring up the shortstop Dansby Swanson another look at the RBI yeah, that's a fastball in and Suzuki did not get all of it but fought it off well enough to get it in to left field and that's kind of what Richards at times battles well, if he had 94 95 in the arsenal to go along with that outstanding changeup he would be able to probably get at hitters a little bit more Hitters a lot of times will go up there looking for the changeup and still be able to defend against that fastball at 91. Florida Lottery called the bullpen here at SunTrust Park. 5-5 in the fifth. A pitching change for the Marlins. The new Monopoly jackpot scratch-offs from the Florida Lottery are a new spin on a classic. They're loaded with prizes from $10,000 to $2 million, so unleash the excitement anytime. The Florida Lottery, it's your ticket, must be 18 or older to play. Play responsibly. So the runners on base are the responsibility of Trevor Richards, of course, as Javi Garrick comes in. His 17th outing this year for the Marlins. Again, we've seen him in a number of different roles. Saved a game a week or so ago. Seen him come in in clean innings. And now we see him try to get out of some trouble in the fifth and keep this game tied. It'll be Dansby Swanson. The pitcher spot due up next in the on-deck circle at the moment is Adam Duvall. This is low and away to Swanson, who struck out in the second inning and flew out to left in the fourth. A season high, 10 hits allowed for Trevor Richards. Maybe two top of the zone beats Swanson one and one.
Fly ball out to right field. Anderson underneath this one will make the play for out number two. And Ciarte's doing all sorts of bluffing over at second base. We never officially tagged up. Nevertheless, two on two out for the pinch hitter Adam Duvall. Braves picked up Adam Duvall from the Cincinnati Reds. He has yet to really hit his stride with Atlanta. Two for 17. Matt Whistler, Lucas Sims, and Preston Tucker going to Cincinnati. As Trevor Richards hopes that Garrett can strand the two inherited runners. As Duvall pops this one up, but it will get into the crowd. You still have to be careful with Duvall. If you make your pitches, you should get the results you want. But he's got really good power. He's got 15 home runs this season. Coming off back-to-back -back 30 homer seasons. Sent out to right field, and it looks like Guerra is going to get the job done. Anderson puts it away, and leaves a couple on, but the Braves tie it up. Been uh, hot, I think is one way to put it, right? In the last few days, yeah. three leadoff home runs, including two yesterday in a doubleheader. Our Toyota Inside Look shows us the four men who have led off both games of a doubleheader with a home run. Acuna Jr. yesterday, Brady Anderson in 1999, Ricky Henderson in 1993, and, oh, and wow. Harry Hooper in 1913. This guy is a Hall of Famer, but Holly, I ask. <laughs> this is, is not true. This is my favorite game that we play. Did he ride a boxcar from Chicago to Los Angeles as a young man? Hooper Beach in Capitola, California, is named after him. Didn't speak to Tris Speaker for a year over religion. Or, he mentioned on the Simpsons episode, Homer at the Bat, which is not true. Number one. Number one. He did not ride the boxcar. I happen to know he was a huge boxcar rider. No, that's not true. Where was it from? Uh, what did we have that from? L.A. to Chicago? Chicago to, LA. Chicago to L.A. He did not. No. And Got it. Sierra is in there safely with a head first slide on a tapper to first. Well, that's a pretty good reflection of the speed that he possesses. One false step, one false move. He's going to be safe every time. We've seen now two examples of this tonight. We've talked about that asset, that great asset, the speed, and finding ways to utilize it. And again, oh, yep, here he comes as he slides right into the picture, literally. And 
Got himself over to first base with a base hit. So he is aboard to lead things off as Christopher Bostic steps in his second game with the Marlins. We're letting that, that Harry Hooper thing marinate for a little while. <laughs> it's okay. We'll get a chance Letting to score some more runs here. I like the, I like like the leadoff like runners. It's like the trivia things. The, right. the broadcasters don't answer the trivia. They let the audience kind of think it through. Everybody at home is digging right now. Absolutely. Googling all those answers. Right. Bostic got in a bat yesterday. Walked. It's in a bat tonight. He's going to hit a double, it looks like. Absolutely. And with the speed of Sierra being waved around third by Freddy Gonzalez, here is no, no throw in there safely. Sierra scores on the double by Bostic, and the Marlins back in front, six to five. Oh, 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 oh. how about it? Nice swing by Bostic. And how about Sierra turning on the Jets? Good to see. Look at that aggressiveness. Freddy Gonzalez over at third base says, uh-uh, we're not going to just set it up. We're going to score runs now. Good swing here. Gets a breaking ball out over the plate, up near the thighs. Makes his way to second base. So he was on his way. This was really as much about Sierra. Great read. Didn't slow down. Almost a little bit of a misstep there at third, but able to kind of get back in line and score. In the Marlins the lead once again. Back to the top of the order. Ortega squares and pulls back. That's ball one. Well, Bostic rode everything but a boxcar to get here yesterday. My goodness. Traded to the Marlins in a deal on Sunday. Had some some travel, uh, I guess fortuitous travel issues. Had a layover in Atlanta and was added to the roster in between games of the doubleheader. And he is being held up at third on the base hit by Ortega. <laughs> Marlins all sorts of hits this inning against Jesse Biddle. Well, how about Ortega's night? He's been on base all four times. Got himself a walk, three hits, a double, scored two runs, hoping to score his third. Fantastic job out of the leadoff spot. A lefty on lefty. Let's give you a quick look at Biddle's numbers coming in. That certainly tells you what uh, has been going on. He's been having a successful season. How about the opponent's batting average of 201? The 2.54 ERA, or Marlins are making that go up, and they're batting a thousand this inning. An infield single for Sierra, a double for Bostic, and then the single for Ortega as JT Realmuto takes the ball low and in. Now these are the situations we talked about how JT can get pitches to hit. This should be one of them. We got runners on the corner, the threat, the stolen base, the speed, and the Marlins with the lead. Well, JT's got four RBIs in this game. This is the fifth game this year in which he has driven in four runs. A career best six RBI day back in 2015. It was smothered by Suzuki, but it may have gotten a piece of JT, so he will head down to first base. Yeah, it did hit him on the uh, back foot, hit the top of the back foot. 78 mile an hour breaking ball. And out to the mound, Chuck Hernandez. I'll tell you what, this has been quick. Four batters, one run, nine pitches for Biddle. All right, well now with Chuck Hernandez going out to the mound, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the Tris Speaker one as we circle back to our trivia, which is not true about Harry Hooper. Tris Speaker, you have to speak with Tris Speaker. You can't not talk to Tris Speaker no matter what the topic is. So that one is not true. No, uh, he didn't ride a boxcar from Chicago to Los Angeles as a young man. He may have done it as an old man, but not as a young man. Now you're splitting hairs at this point, which is not true, America. Ride a boxcar. How about that? Wow. Nailed it. I thought he was a world-class boxcar <laughs> rider. You've got to know the man behind the question. And I know the man behind the question now. It's taken me a few years. He was a member of the Golden Outfield with Duffy Lewis and Tris Speaker. <laughs> but apparently they had a little falling out. Right. Hooper was a nice guy. I don't think he would allow a year of time to get through. Turn yeah. over a, a disagreement. He was also a four-time world champion with the Boston Red Sox. That's right. 
I mean, I know all these things about Harry Hooper. I didn't know that he was a. Now you know a little bit more. Boxcar rider. I also know that Brian Anderson's pretty good with runners in scoring position. He will have a huge opportunity here with the bases loaded and nobody out in the sixth. Well, he's going to have to work hard down two strikes. Well, we've seen for what Biddle has. He's got a live arm. 94-95 on the fastball. Big breaking ball. It's been his undoing so far this inning. That's what's gotten him in trouble. Well, yesterday in the doubleheader, the Marlins were one for 11 with 12 men left on base. Tonight, they are four for 10 with runners in scoring position. Now well, they've had that leadoff guy on in five of the six innings tonight. They've been able to apply pressure. It's a tough strike three call. Well, after a breaking ball in, this one away, and it, my goodness, I suppose it just gets that outside edge. So we know what BA's feeling right now when it rains and pours. Pitcher's pitch. The best he would have done with that is foul it off. So now it's Derek Dietrich takes one outside. Both teams with 10 hits today. Both teams with an error as well. The only important run column favors the Marlins six to five looking for more here in the sixth. Dietrich 0 for 3 in the ball game. A strikeout in the first inning against Donabel Sanchez. A couple of ground outs. Dietrich's held the zone against the lefties. Four home runs. And 10 RBIs, 232 batting average. He's got himself ahead in the count. Of course, Dietrich, early part of the season, had been in a, a platoon situation with Cameron Mabin before Mabin went to Seattle. And now with Bohr in Philadelphia, an everyday first baseman. But this, a ground ball, double play to end the inning. Marlins get one run, though, and take a 6-5 lead through five and a half here in Atlanta. Inning, Paul Severino, Todd Hollinsworth, Jessica Blaylock back with you. Adam Conley takes over. The third pitcher of the night for Miami, four and third from Trevor Richards. 
Javi Guerra got the last two outs of the fifth, and now it's the lefty in his 36th game this season. Opponent sitting 183 against him. Yeah, a real opportunity to calm things down. He's got good history against the Atlanta Braves. Of course, uh, listen, the Braves have seen him as a starter, too. Conley, just a little over 38 innings at 352 ERA. Lefty's hitting 185. Righty's 180 against him this season. And he's got the top of the Braves lineup to contend with. Acuna Jr., Charlie Culberson, and Freddie Freeman as the Marlins protect a one-run lead. Of course, Acuna Jr. got the scoring started on the first pitch of the ball game from Trevor Richards. A leadoff home run for the third consecutive game against Miami. And in fact, a home run in five consecutive games overall for Acuna Jr., the youngest player in baseball history to hit homers in five straight. Oh! Ball one from Conley. Cut and a miss, 96 on the outside corner. And Conley likes to work fast, 94-96 on the fastball, slider and change. In the air to right center field, Anderson gives way to Sierra. See how the bullpen shakes out if the Marlins can continue to hold a lead. There's Culberson. Right after Acuna Jr. went deep in the first inning on the second pitch of the game, Culberson did the same. And Culberson's really put together a nice season as their utility infielder. He has gotten an awful lot of playing time. Some pretty strong numbers. A couple more hits tonight. She's been much better as a player, starting player, than as a pinch hitter off the bench. Well, we have heard the description of Charlie Culberson in, uh, in our time chatting with different Braves folks. And again, it sounds simple, but those who know the game know that it's a, a very high compliment. He is just a baseball player. There's a lot of the things the right way can play a lot of different positions. A superstar probably not but that's not to say that he's not a big part of this Atlanta Braves team. Three and one. Conley has faced Culberson once struck him out. really doing his best to stay on the edges. You can blame him. Freddie Freeman awaits. Swung on and missed. Took a little off. 87 miles an hour. Gets a strike out of Culberson. Two away. Now first two outs against the righties. Conley's done a nice job. The sequencing away. Fastballs setting up the changeup. So the 3-1 pitch at 96. This the changeup at 87. Conley doing a nice job of mixing it. Now Freeman. Freeman a base hit in the first inning. Walked and scored in the third. And struck out in the fourth. Now Freeman hitting 329 against lefties this season. That's the second highest batting average by a left handed hitter in Major League Baseball. This one sent out to center field. Sierra is back. And that one is gone. Freeman has done it again. His eighth home run this year against the Marlins. Just enough to get out for his 20th on the year. Well, another fastball. I'll tell you what. 
You've just got to be so precise, especially in hitter's counts. Now you see JT reach back to the inside corner. And he's even holding it for us. Shows you where it's supposed to be and where it actually ended up. Paul, there's not too many left-handed hitters in the game that can turn 96 from another lefty around like you just witnessed. No, no, I don't think that there are. And that is a gift that young man right there has had himself a pretty good season. And now Mark Hankis to left. Ortega makes the play a step or two in foul territory. But Freeman has tied it up. 6-6 six, six, after 6. Taking care of Marlins fans on Senior Thursdays. And 65 and older can receive complimentary ticket to the game with a valid ID at the third base entrance to Marlins Park. Join us Thursday, August 23rd, when the Marlins face the Braves. For more information, visit marlins.com slash offers. Back here at SunTrust Park, a back and forth affair between the Marlins and the Braves. As we move to the top of the seventh, Jesse Biddle out for his second inning of work. Gave up a run in the top of the sixth inning. But the Braves got one back in the bottom. Another home run for Freddie Freeman. Now, it's a pretty good example of momentum inside the game of baseball. Biddle was on the ropes. He would pick up a strikeout against Anderson and get the ground ball double play. Oh. Or double D. Got him out of that inning. And he turned right back around. Freeman gets you. With two outs. Yeah. You know. It's kind of been a theme. <laughs> All season? Yes. <laughs> oh. The Braves have three two out RBIs tonight which means they have 49 two-out runs scored against the Marlins this year. They're averaging four of those. Uh, do the math. I think it was that about four a game. Feel about right? <laughs> I don't know if it feels you look, right. You look I mean, exasperated. Well, I mean, it feels Are you like, okay? Yeah, it feels like more. <laughs> well, just because, I mean, again, it, it's... If I feel it, you know the Marlins are feeling it too. Well, I mean, it's there's just no way to get these guys to three outs right. sometimes. It's been a struggle. Kind of speaks to, again, the talent level that they have. Breaking ball gets Castro. He breaks his bat in the dirt. You see that frustration kind of spill over right there. T-Mobile is built for baseball. This is Brock Holt, top of the eighth inning. A home run off the facade of the second deck. A solo homer that gave the Red Sox a 2-1 lead. It is currently the bottom of the ninth in Philadelphia. 
as those two teams go at it. We'll see uh, the Boston Red Sox at Fenway Park in a couple of weeks, a two game series. Of course, see plenty of the Philadelphia Phillies from here on out as well. 0 and 1 to JT Riddle. season now where the teams that are you know, like the Braves like the Phillies like so many teams in the National League you get to this point of the season and certainly you get to this point in many nights and you peek out at the scoreboard right now again it is 2 1 Phillies trail the Braves have a one game lead in the division as Riddle rolls one up the first baseline that tails foul. You looked, right? You in a race? You looked. Oh, I, looked, I was an outfielder. I looked at everything. I, I was scoreboard watching opening day. I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> I could never get. <laughs> when you're in the outfield, you're counting blades of grass. You're <laughs> counting the attendance, gauging the wind, watching the scoreboard, <laughs> uh, paying attention to pitches. Well, in between. <laughs> Ball and two strikes now to JT Riddle. Riddle a ground out, a strikeout, a flyout tonight. It's easy to beat the heat when you become an energy saving expert. Go to FPL.com slash beat the heat. Seventh, and that'll bring up Yadiel Rivera. Yeah, a bit of really settling down after getting himself in that trouble in the sixth. Back, to back strikeouts, three of the last four. I believe the Washington Nationals lose tonight, and they are trailing the St. Louis Cardinals in St. Louis five to nothing. They will be back at 500 once again. That has been the story of their season. It absolutely has. The last two nights for them, unbelievable. Heartbreaking. Yeah. Walked off back to back nights in two cities. And that's given back leads. That's when things, uh, speaking, I guess, in my career, most guys will tell you, if you're in this game long enough, you see some of it. If the bullpen, and that's the, you know, you talk about the heartbeat of a team. Kind of going through that bullpen. You start to lose games where you have leads. That's where the sli slippery slope starts. Middle strikes out the side, 6-6. Six, six.
Blue to stay cool. He put a piece of wet lettuce in his helmet before he put it on his head. Well, it has caught everyone's attention, and for Perry, he is getting a kick out of it, too. It's crazy. I've got uh, texts and messages from people I haven't heard of and from, from, from in 10 years. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's weird. It's it, Freddie Gonzalez's idea. It's about the third or fourth time we've done it, and he came up with the idea. Freddie's the inventor, but you're the face of it now. Did you ever think that Perry Hill would go viral? <laughs> Never in a million years. I just happened to be walking at the end of the dugout where the cameras were, I guess, and they caught me. So guys, the lesson that we learn here, we are always watching. Yes, we are. That is why anytime I eat in the uh, in the in the box, in the, in the press box, the uh, booth here before a game, I don't eat in front of a camera because I always get caught eating. That's true. Yeah. So that's why I'm always tucked in the back of the broadcast. Well, little booth. do you know that every time you start to eat, I get on the horn with everybody and tell them that you are eating. Either you get on the horn <laughs> or or you walk right into the food room in San Diego, snap a picture, walk away, and then post yeah. it up on the scoreboard. Yeah. You've done that too. Got to know people. That was nice. <laughs> To first base, a sliding play by Dietrich on oh, yeah. and throw to Conley to get the out. Well, nice job. Dietrich keeping this on the infield, coming up with a clean, kindly cover and jammed Camargo with a good fastball. Talk about the uh, out of town scores a moment ago. The Boston Red Sox have held off the Phillies, a final score of two to one. So at the moment, it's a one and a half game lead for Atlanta in the National League East. As that one is fair down the left field line. Ortega up throwing, and in there is Inciarte. Another first pitch hit for the Atlanta Braves in Ciarte. A triple, a double, and a walk today. Stays inside, drives it down that third base line. Rivera playing in. I think that kicked up some chalk, too. Very close. It's almost like the Braves lull you to sleep. And it doesn't happen like over and over and over again. And it's like as soon as you blink and you can throw that first fastball, top to bottom in the lineup, they're ready to pounce. We mentioned it at the beginning of the ball game, obviously the first two pitches hit for home runs. The Braves second in Major League Baseball behind the <laughs> Boston Red Sox. Oh, they're the only team that they're behind uh, in first pitch batting average. I mean, it's pretty amazing. 366 coming into tonight. Wait, there's a stat that the Red Sox lead baseball in. I'm surprised. They just picked up their 86th win. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I was listening to some baseball conversations this morning. They were talking about what a good fastball hitting team they were. Yeah. I just happened to see the numbers a day or so ago. Oh. Oh. And Suzuki with a fly ball out to shallow left center field. This will be Riddle. We apologize for Suzuki's frustrations after the fly ball. And there are two away here in the seventh. Yeah, the Boston Red Sox top of the leaderboard in batting average against the fastball. They happen to be <laughs> top of the leaderboard in batting average against non fastballs as well. <laughs> Just because I happen to look and we're kind of talking about these things, right? Now things are certainly clicking on all cylinders for the Boston Red Sox right now. Johnny Ventures up for the Braves in their bullpen. A couple of innings of work from Jesse Biddle. No one currently in the on deck circle for the Braves with two outs. I'm sure they'll play it by ear to see who bats if the inning extends. But Conley trying to keep that from happening. Strike out in the second. And a couple of flyouts for Dansby Swanson tonight. Tied at six with two outs in the bottom of the seventh inning. Center field. A 
two out, one scoring knock. As Enciarte is just barely in there safely. 7-6 Atlanta. I'll tell you what, it's pretty unbelievable. This Atlanta Braves team, the damage they've done against the Marlins this season with two outs. Well, once again, Swanson, one of his better swings tonight. This rocket back through the middle just gets past the outstretched dive of JT. Certainly Enciarte ready to roll with two outs. offense against the Marlins through 13 games this season had averaged seven runs a game and I mentioned to you you know what's more likely to happen at some point the Marlins are probably going to have to step up and find a, a huge offensive game and they've had one tonight but they're going to need more the Braves just keep coming at you top to bottom in this order that is why, again, whether they're playing the Marlins or any of the other teams in Major League Baseball, just uh, an overall thought process of the Braves that they are an aggressive bunch, a relentless bunch. And uh, again, a game and a half up on the Phillies after a loss at home tonight against the Red Sox for the Phils. Could be a tough out, tough team to catch in this NL East. Albies dribbler to third, barehanded Rivera, no play. A pinch hit infield single for Albies. It's a topper to third. And his speed. Really no shot with Rivera playing back. There we go. That's a pretty good look. Rivera just a little too far to go, even on the bare hand. He'll play at first base. They continue to use their speed and Need to apply a pressure to the Marlins. As Acuna Jr. sends one out to right field, and he has done it again. A three-run home run for Ronald Acuna Jr. A couple of storylines continue to play out. Two out run scoring, first pitch swinging, and damage from Acuna. I mean, Coors Light refreshing finish. It is absolutely unbelievable. We have watched it here in the first two days here in Atlanta. We've really seen it almost all season long. So many of these storylines really playing out. Acuna showing off his power the other way. You mentioned it, two outs. Done it once again, and on the first pitch, they continue to add to those impressive numbers that they have on the season. And you can kind of see how they extended bats, and like you even get back to Albies. Like this inning has been extended by a slow roller to the left side, right? You know, and that's that's who they are. That's their identity. They have enough speed in this lineup to get the infield hits, to keep innings going. And again, we've talked about it numerous times, line to line. First career multi-home run game for Ronald Acuna Jr. What a few days it has been for that young man. Culberson takes low. Four runs home this inning for the Braves. Three of them on the one swing of the bat from Ronald Acuna Jr. As Culberson lines one out to Anderson in right. That will end the seventh, but the Braves get four.
And the Marlins six. We welcome me inside the broadcast booth. Paul Severino, Todd Hollinsworth. Well, uh, again, if you're able to take a step back and just appreciate as a baseball fan what Ronald Acuna Jr. has been doing throughout this rookie season, it's been amazing. Unfortunately, the Marlins have seen it firsthand. I'm going to stir it up. Juan Soto who? Oh, wow. Boy. No. Wow. I mean, we have seen Acuna, but I mean, it's been a highlight show. I yeah. mean, this is what this young man has done. Any fastball in the zone, he has been all over. Any mistake out over the plate, it's been to right field. It's been to left field. It's been the homer. It's been the big hit. It's been the spark plug. What this team has accomplished, this Atlanta Braves team has accomplished here, it's basically post-All-Star break, moving him into that leadoff spot. My goodness, he's completely capitalized on what he gets at the top, which is a ton of fastballs, a lot of good pitches to hit because he's you know up in front of the big boys. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, he, he, this Braves offense, top to bottom, it, it, it's not one guy or two guys. Or three. It, it's upwards of six or seven guys. Now, well, Ventures gets the strikeout of Sierra. There's about a million catchphrases you can throw out there, and I'm not one to really want throw them out there, but there's one that continues to come to mind. It's the idea that hitting is contagious, and you watch what the Braves do top to bottom. You know, you insert a Culberson, he has a big game. You know, you get, uh, you know, a pinch hit here or a pinch hit there. It, it is very similar to what I just described. Galloway going to go ahead and take the pinch hit here. Albie's in at second base. So Johnny Venters, 29th game for him this season. A 2.84 ERA opponents hitting 2.14 against him as that one is inside at 94 miles an hour. Yeah, baseball, you know, it's a game that, you know, players practice it every day and obviously they go out and play a game. But so much of the game is, you know, you practice what you believe is going to happen. And I think what we're seeing with this Atlanta Braves team, we talk about it like, you know, I talk about it in terms of hitting. You know, you hit the ball a particular way in a particular spot, maybe your zone, right? I'm looking for a fastball because this is what I hit really well. So that when you get into the ball game, you say, okay, when I get that pitch, I'm going to do that, and it's an expected result. Right. The Atlanta Braves right now expect to score runs with two outs. There's no doubt about it. They expect to good, get good pitches to hit early in the count from the Marlins right now, and they expect to do things with those pitches. And we've we've watched it all season long. It's a, it's a big reason why they're scoring all these runs and why they're getting out of front so many of these games. Yeah, they have been a relentless bunch with two outs this season. They have been relentless uh, in any situation, but especially with two outs, right when you think, okay, we're going to get back to the bat rack and maybe put some runs on the board, boom, here come the Atlanta Braves. As Rafael Ortega digs in and oh. takes a called strike. You know, they've also been able to seize momentum, whether it's two out runs or not. I mean, the Marlins have scored in the top of the third. Braves answered back. Marlins scored in the top of the fourth. Bottom of the fifth, the Braves answered back. Top six, Marlins get a run. Braves get one in the bottom of the inning. I mean, it's just, the, the, again, the back and forth, but Braves is not going anywhere. Ball and strike to Ortega. Who's had himself a nice night. Takes a strike at the top of the zone. Single and a stolen base in the first inning. An RBI double in the fourth and a single in the sixth. They check at third. No swing. Says the third base umpire Carlos Torres. Two balls and two strikes. Ortega cuts and misses. And that is the second strike out of the inning for Venters. Well, Venters, one of his better breaking balls, Ortega unable to hold up. He's had a very nice night at the plate. First night the Braves have been able to retire him. Strike to JT Real Muto, who has driven in four in this ballgame. 
Had himself a two run home run back in the third and a two run single in the fourth. For Johnny Venters, the road back to the major leagues has been a, a long and winding one. Three and a half Tommy John surgeries. Oh. Certainly a story of perseverance, and we have uh, told that story an awful lot in different forms and fashions, including with the guy at first base, Isaac Galloway, waiting so long to get to the big leagues. But three and a half Tommy John surgeries for Johnny Venters. Pitching in the big leagues this year for the first time since 2012. His first Tommy John surgery in 2005, then 2013, 2014. This one is lined to Camargo at third. Sharply hit, but right into his glove. We head to the last of the eighth. Last of this four game series, Marlins and Braves. The Marlins live pregame show on the air at 7 o'clock. First pitch a little after 7 30. Jose Urania gets the ball for Miami. And on the other side of that matchup, it is Kevin Gosman, who was acquired right around the deadline from the Baltimore Orioles, coming off a stellar start his last time out. It was his home debut, eight innings, an earned run, no walks, eight strikeouts. So we'll see Urania and we'll see Gosman tomorrow night. And then it's off to Washington, D.C. A day off Thursday before a three-game weekend set against the Nats. Drew Steckenrider into the ball game, his 56th game this season. He'll face Freddie Freeman, Nick Marcakis, and Johan Camargo. Oh. Freeman can't believe the called strike. The rest of us can't believe how productive he's been against the Marlins this year. Well, Stegen Riders coming off an outstanding appearance. Of course, it was in the Mets series. It's the first time he's been on the mound in a few days. Back to August 11th. Inning struck out the side. The last two outings, he's been pretty good. No earned runs. Freeman out 
to right field sends Anderson back he is on the track and will make the catch. Now well, Freeman just got under that one. One out now for Nick Markakis. It's been all about that young man these couple of days. Two days and three games. Ronald Acuna Jr. is led off each of these three games with a home run. He's got two home runs tonight. As Markakis takes a called strike. He's got four home runs in his last, uh, what, about 24 hours? Just over 24 hours? Yeah, pretty much. Like I said, they haven't been long lengthy at bats either. It's almost like he's just hunting, you know, each at bat. He's hunting one pitch, and as soon as he gets it, it just unloads. Yeah. Markek is out to left for Ortega. MLB.tv is now available at a lower price. For just $49.99, you can watch every out-of-market regular season game, plus get a free subscription to MLB at Bat Premium. I've got another restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Well, the two home runs that he hit yesterday, Acuna, to the left and right of straightaway center field. One to left, one to right tonight. So spraying it all over the ballpark. to think this is just the beginning of his career that is yeah <laughs> Camargo with a ground ball to Dietrich sliding play and gets it to Steckenrider for the final out in the eighth, a 1 2 3 eighth for Steck. Last chance for the Marlins. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. Buy Lincoln. Join the Lincoln Summer Invitation Sales Event. And buy your South Florida Honda dealers. A 10-6 deficit for the Marlins as we head to the top of the ninth inning. Last hope as A.J. Minter is in. Marlins fans, Fox Sports Florida and Southwest Airlines are giving you an opportunity to enter for a chance to win an all-inclusive stay in Nassau in the Bahamas. Labor Day weekend for the Southwest Airlines Summer Days Getaway. Just tweet hashtag Southwest Summer Days Sweeps and hashtag sponsored at Fox Sports FL for your chance to win. 
So A.J. Minter out of the Braves bullpen. He'll face Brian Anderson, Derek Dietrich, and Starlin Castro. Anderson takes a strike at 96 miles an hour from the lefty. Anderson 0 for 4 tonight. A couple of strikeouts. Now three for his last 28. Well, the strike three call in his uh, last at bat. I wasn't in love with it. Yeah, back up breaking ball to that outside edge. Just like I said, when it rains, it pours. Sometimes you get into these a little bit of a funk offensively, and I feel like anything that doesn't bounce gets called a strike. Makes you awfully defensive as a hitter. Kind of like that. On yeah. the check swing. Here comes the one two. This one lined into right center field. That's a base hit for Anderson. There you go. Nice way to start the ninth inning. Yeah, good to see Brian Anderson. Great swing. Kind of his part of the field, if you know what I mean. This is where he likes to go. That's exactly where Minter was trying to put it. Pass ball up. A great swing shooting that right center field gap. Ciarte cuts it off and gets it back in. Marlins are going to need a few base runners. Give themselves an opportunity to tie up this ball game. Minter's got 10 saves. This is not a save opportunity, but he has kind of turned into their closer. Oh, Vizcaino, who has been on the disabled list. His 10 saves are the most by a rookie left-hander since Alasuna saved 12 games for Houston in 1991. Goodness. You know he's a closer because he's got the whole entrance music light show thing going on. Oh, yeah, I almost fell out of my chair. <laughs> Didn't know what was going on. Yeah, they do play with the lights here well, quite a bit. It's, not, it's a non safe situation. What I'm getting at is I wasn't ready for it. Right. Right. That lightning and rain and all kinds of stuff. Hope for a rally here in the ninth inning, but when this one ends, the WB Mason Marlins live postgame show. Craig Minervini, Jeff Nelson, live from the field here in Atlanta. We'll hear from them. We'll hear from Don Mattingly. Get his thoughts on this one. Start for Trevor Richards, who had been so good. Last four starts, an ERA around one and a half, but not as effective tonight as Dietrich strikes out for the first out here in the ninth. Cunha, Cunha didn't get to the big leagues till April 25th. April 25th. That's exactly right. April 25th. Started out in the minor leagues. Hmm. He's got 19 home runs. He's done his damage in uh, three and a half months. Interesting topic of conversation. I always think, you know, of course they brought him up late. They didn't want to start his clock, I believe. Isn't that how we, we should say it? Sure. I don't know. I just I find that somehow we need to fix that in the game of baseball. Certainly understand the strategy behind it. I don't think there's any arguing that. It's not an inability to recognize the talent talent, but Acuna dominated in spring training and basically by the rules that there are started out the season in the minors. Yeah. Uh, and again, and dare I say, if it comes down to it, I think you'd be kicking yourselves if you lose this division by a game and think, boy, could we have had more impact early on? Maybe? True. Just saying. Yeah. And, and I, I think every team at one time or another is probably guilty of that same. Oh, absolutely. Thing. There's no doubt about it. I've seen numerous examples of it. I just I, I think that's one thing that somehow could be addressed if you know what I mean. We want to let the best best players play don't we.
is the short way to sum that up for those who we are clear as to what we're talking about. If the, the later a player comes up, the less service time he gets, the extra year of control down the road a team will have over said player before free agency. Right. Marlins hoping for a late rally here with one on and one out in the ninth inning. That one low at 98 miles an hour and the count is full. Castro a single in the second. Walked and stole a base in the third and a couple of strikeouts since. Adebel Sanchez started the game five innings five runs four of them earned and then Biddle Venters and now Minter Castro with a ground ball to third they get one that's all they will get the fielders choice and the Marlins are down to their last out. It's up to J.T. Riddle. Braves do not hold on Castro, who takes off for second. The defensive indifference. And ball one to Riddle. on deck as Minter steps off. Out to center field and Ciarte is there and the Braves have taken the first three games of this series against the Marlins. 10-6 the final score. Fireworks at the end, fireworks at the beginning, and fireworks in the middle. First two pitches of the ball game, home runs. Ronald Acuna Jr. is homer to lead off three games in this series. Culberson after him. It was back and forth for a while before the Braves ultimately took control of this ball game late. And they win this one 10 to 6. And with the loss in Philadelphia tonight by the Phils, now a two-game cushion to top the National League East for the Atlanta Braves. Good to see the Marlins score some runs tonight, kind of get things going and fight back in this one, but just a little bit too much of the Atlanta Braves offense ultimately gets it done. So Brian Snitker has got to be happy with the way that his team has played. They had uh, been leaning on Annabelle Sanchez for quite some time this season, been so consistent.